probably, I think the one of the most pressing issues in architecture today is responsible use of materials and like climate change is pretty freaking pressing. Figuring out a way that the built environment can become like less permanent, um, especially with just like material consumption in general. There's a lot of sustainable housing or sustainable designs um, or um, like zero, net zero um, buildings that are being built. Um, of just like figuring out how we can, you know, make a building footprint without maybe a massive carbon footprint. <laughs> The one at least that I like to focus on, um, and housing everyone that does it, you know, in a way that people can afford and that is livable and that is like a, a nice way of living. A lot of people couldn't afford a place to live in a place they could get a job or a lot of people just got kicked out by the government or the gentrification. I think so much of what is built right now is really shit. Um, not necessarily what's built in the architectural world, but what we kind of the default construct, like what we default to in terms of what we're constructing, I don't think is stuff that's good for people um, or good for cities or good for place. I don't think architects should step back and just be like, oh, we, there's nothing we can do, so we're not going to do anything. What we need actually is to look for solutions that are not just like not conventional solutions, but starting to look into um, how to address these problems in a way that would deal with like either social issues or dealing with money. It takes a certain knack of creativity and resourcefulness that a lot of practices don't really have in the ways that they're set up. I think that it should be public space. Um, there's less space, so what are we doing with it? And like, what defines public space, especially with technology? And like, doesn't always have to be outdoors. Um, who's responsible for it? Like, who is it for? It should be for more people than I think it is right now. Working with uh, the Urban Design Build Studio really opened my eyes to realizing that a lot of architecture still doesn't service um, the majority of people that actually exist on this earth like the, the kind of traditional model of patronage i think can be wonderful in producing like poetic spaces but really who are they for there is a li definitely limited access to architecture from a lot of people i feel like it's this luxury of rich people where they you know ask architects to build something nice for them or it's just like this big corporate thing that they build for like company or whatever I wish it becomes more like more accessible, more daily life kind of thing Um, I think that the profession like will have to reckon with sort of the implications of its, I don't know sort of more singular views of I don't know, the, abil the ability of their, their actions to affect change. I don't know if who architecture cares about. I also don't know if it's about caring anymore. Again, whether it's about the client or whether it's about the builder, whether it's about the designer, whether it's about the draftsman helping the designer. Um, I think there's too many capitalist undertones globally associated with architecture that sort of muddle it and discolor it for what it could actually be. So like a lot of people would say like, oh, um, designing for the needy, but like how do you define needy? Like financially needy, emotionally, mentally needy, or just like excessively needy in the terms of like unnecessary design, so. It's really important to think of inclusivity in our design. Um, not just the steps we've made in terms of, you know, ADA code and making buildings physically accessible, but also physically comfortable uh, for people uh, of all backgrounds and creating specific environments that can be used um, with certain groups in mind that may not be reflected in the architecture profession itself. 
So thinking of who's not at the table because it's really what we're creating is something for them, not something for us. Diversity and representation in the profession are really big issues, especially when you look at, um, like public interest design is getting a lot of recognition currently, but I don't like, I would hope that that doesn't just become like a fad and like it's cool and popular to be doing something, but I think there needs to be like more embedded representation of that in communities. It has been in the past like a very elitist thing, but then there's been ways there's like um, projects where you start to incorporate how to, you know, bigger community, I guess. One of the biggest issues um, that we're facing as a whole in this profession is uh, communication. I think there's a disconnect between what the public perceives as what the architect does and like what we do and like what services we can provide, I guess. A lot of the times, um, what architects think that the people may need is very different from what they actually need. Architecture doesn't really, I, I think architects don't typically actually follow through with what they talk about. Um, they use a lot of different kind of language or I don't know my whole thesis is about it, but I think it's like they use this language and then they make it seem like they care a lot, but then like they don't really care. Like it's, it ultimately comes down to like the project or the, the building or the environment or the system. And it's all these kind of big words that don't really matter to the people. And even when the peop the architects who claim that they care about the people, like even they could arguably not really care about the people. Really finding ways that architecture can more accessible to just, I guess, more people in general rather than becoming part of like a proliferation of like power structure and all that. A lot of it is politics, but just like a balance of like understanding like being, you know, being equitable with people and like understanding places that the people need help in, but also there's a side of like people that, that want to take money or like want to take advantage of the uh, monetary opportunities and that's like always the, the biggest issue I think of architecture. But I think that's kind of a professional problem. Um, that kind of scales up as you kind of grow uh, and just look at other different professions as well, but it's definitely really evident in architecture. I think we definitely need more diversity, we need more females in the field and more minorities, just more like non mainstream, <coughs> like what, old white male voices in general. I think it's definitely getting better, but in terms of like women and people of color, it's still like way too few. Um, and just the people who are on top of the profession who will hopefully die out soon still tend to uh, lean towards in favor uh, straight white males. Who is in the actual profession, who's representing it, and then who, who those people are, because those, those are truly the ideas that are influencing our built environment. Honestly, if we have that, I probably want to be an architect. Architecture has this tendency to be very isolationist and not really interact as much as it really should with other disciplines and the progress being made there. I think if architecture fails to keep up with other um, fields of study, it might become irrelevant. Um, I think it's too self-absorbed. Well, in school, we have like all of the freedom in the world to build whatever we want with no budget and can be some crazy thing. Not being so detached from the people that we're creating for. So when you're designing something, not just thinking about how something looks or the materials of it or whatever, but actually considering there's going to be actual humans using that, which we don't get that in school. The issue is that a lot of things that affect the most people and the most important things are really mundane. and maybe because of the way we've been educated or because we're just young and want to do crazy things. Um, that's not a lot of people's desires. So the work that we want to do and the work that we need to do might not align and that could be a problem. In recent decades, uh, there is a great development in terms of design tools, digital tools. So we learn much more about how we can do stuff how we can build, how we can design. But I feel at the same time, this has been going so well that we start to ignore about why we build, for what purpose we build, that we think the construction methodology can replace the thinking about the purpose, the meaning behind this.
Um, I also think that um, architecture overall has become very placeless. And I think like beyond like housing people or building office buildings, I think too often right now, any building that's constructed that makes headlines and makes articles and that we celebrate in architectural school, um, it doesn't kind of draw from its place enough. I think that there's um, a really important place in architecture for research and understanding issues um, of place and of context um, that can't be overlooked and I think a lot of times it is overlooked. Well, at least in architecture education, I feel like a lot of the times we run into this problem of just speculating but never being able to test a lot of, uh, a lot of our ideas, um, which is a source of frustration for a lot of us, I know that, from talking to other people. In the future, we have to justify about all the new technology events in terms of architecture that we don't do parametric stuff just for its own sake, but how we connect to our purpose. It's especially more frustrating when it comes to architecture because when you're building a building, when you're constructing something, the stakes are so high and there's so many different stakeholders involved. A lot of good architecture is considered something that's very beautiful, but not so much functional. And sort of architects like Frank Gehry and other ones that focus more on the form or creating buildings that um, have a lot of structural issues and like just standard issues that even though the building is beautiful, um, it's causing like leaks and other um, really dreadful maintenance issues. There's the glossy, beautiful architecture um, that doesn't necessarily connect with people in place and I think that that as an umbrella topic is one of the largest issues that we see today um, and I think that encompasses a lot of issues um, it encompasses marginalized groups and like just trickles down from there I think it's important to sort of find um, beautiful spaces within functionality and sort of create um, unique structures and unique um, building details that are beautiful but also extremely functional.